Hello again. Um, it's not been very long since I've made a video about uh, Agatha Christie and um, this time I, I, I just had to do this one because I've just become I've just come into possession of a wonderful book um, and uh, some of you may have it you probably have but I just got so excited about this as I do about most Agatha Christie material and this one is called Hercule Pyro and the Greenshore Folly. Um, it's uh, a new publication of a story which was re which was previously unpublished, um, and what makes it special? Um, it has an introduction by Tom Adams. Now, if any of you watched my last video, you saw me rave on about Tom Adams and how great he was, and illustrating uh, and uh, the artwork he was commissioned to do for her covers um, from uh, 1962 onwards. Um, but this one, he's actually been recommissioned to do a new cover for this book. And this was published uh, in 2014, but I didn't know anything about it, which just goes to show. Um, anyway, the cover is spectacular. Um, normally on Agatha Christie books, the contract is that no characters within the book have to appear on the, on, on, on the uh, cover sheet. Uh, and no... Um, no Certainly no pictures of Agatha Christie have to appear there. But on this special occasion, uh, permission was given to actually allow Tom Adams to put one of the key characters, um, there she is in the centre, uh, on the book uh, sleeve, and also a cameo of um, Agatha herself in her favourite retreat at Greenway, uh, just relaxing in the summer sunshine. Now, this story um, was published uh, early, very er what, what, sorry, it wasn't published early on, but it did become um, the uh, Dead Man's Folly, the, one of her favourite novels, um, uh, when it was developed from a novella, which this is, into a full novel. Um, and it was originally going to be a fundraising effort for her local church. Um, but before I carry ranting on, I'd just like to read you um, a little bit of the, the cover notes. Um, I'm going to have to adjust the light a bit because things are a bit dim in here. OK. Written by Agatha Christie in 1954 to help raise money for her local church at Churston Ferrers, the Green Shore Folly novella was ultimately never published. Uh, in its original form. Instead it became the basis for one of her favourite novels, Dead Man's Folly, and a Miss Marple story was written and a Miss Marple story was written for the church. Marking sixty years since it was written, this previously unpublished version of the story is introduced by Tom Adams, who we know and love, um, whose uh, intrinsic sorry whose intricate paintings um, uh, graced Agatha Christie's paperback uh, covers throughout the 1960s and 1970s, and who has painted an, a remarkable new jacket for the book. It also includes a preface by Agatha Christie's grandson, uh, Matthew Pritchard, and an insightful afterward, afterward by the writing of the, about the writing of the story by the renowned Christie expert, Dr. John Curran. Okay, so um, I stumbled through that, but you get the general idea. Um, and it's a hardback book. It's wonderful. Um, inside it has a, a, a really, really uh, interesting introduction by Tom Adams, uh, which tells a little bit about the history of his work with Agatha uh, and uh, the history of his work with the publishers in doing the illustrations. And one of the things I never realised was that Tom Adams, although his covers illustrate so well Agatha's work, never actually met her. Um, they, they arranged meetings, but the meetings never came to fruition. Um, uh, and I, I just find that um, a bit odd. But uh, as he says in his introduction, it was probably for the better, because Agatha was very much a loner. Um, she she was very much her own person, and she, he thinks it may have been a bit fragile had they met to discuss his work for the artwork on the book sleeves. 
anyway that's all I wanted to tell you really um, and uh, if you can get hold of this I got mine from Amazon and I think the price was it's, was $12.99 um, but it's a, an amazing read uh, you will pick up fragments of Dead Man's Folly in it because it's obviously that was developed from it uh, but Paro is his very best in it and also what comes through is, is the atmospheric uh, the atmospheric feeling that you are actually at Greenway um, so yes it really does uh, fit, the, fit the mark um, on the cover also there's the fallen oak tree uh, there's the um, the summer house and uh, there's also the boathouse. Um, now the boathouse uh, there is thatched. Now if you visit Greenway it's, it's tiled um, and I think you'll find in Dead Man's, in, 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 uh, Dead Man's Folly you, it, it, it's actually tiled but originally it was thatched. So there we go. I've ranted on about this book. It's a very short video. Um, oh, one more thing. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a, a video about Agatha Christie's time as an apocryphal assistant uh, when she worked as a, uh, a, a, a an assistant to the apocrypha at uh, the chemist rather at, um, at at a hospital in Torquay and it's there she learned all about drugs drug dosage and poisons and in her novels as you, as you know um, poisons are used rather a lot um, and the accuracy of, of, of the effects of the poison and the toxicology of the poison um, is, is supposed to be very, very accurate. I mean, it, it's good and people can refer to it. Um, in my research for that, I, I bought other books um, and uh, one of them, the one I bought, was, was this one, um, which I'm not going to go into, but it's a, a textbook on toxicology. Um, uh, and uh, when I'm, do I, I actually do a talk on uh, on uh, poisons in the garden and Agatha Christie's novels, linking the various natural um, occur naturally occurring poisons in plants such as belladonna uh, uh, and ricin, etc., to um, her novels. That's another story, and it's certainly another video. Um, oh, I've got to end on something else, haven't I? Okay. This is, I, in my last video I talked about an autobiography of Agatha, um, but this one I, I, I picked up recently at a second hand shop, and it's by Gillian Gill, and it's The Woman and Her Mysteries. And it's so good. Um, it has photographs, it has all sorts of insights into Agatha Christie's life, including her time as an apocryphal assistant in the hospital at Torquay. Well, I really do think I've said enough now and I really do think I'm going to end and say goodbye. Um, I'm going to just relax a little bit now. It's a Friday night. I'm feeling quite tired. had a busy week. Uh, I might read some more Agatha but I certainly will um, be doing a little bit more research into her uh, work as a chemist, uh, a chemist's assistant. I'm going to end by just showing you some more of my covers and then um, that's it really. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope it's been interesting and uh, I'm on the lookout now for more unusual covers by Agatha. So don't forget if you can get hold of this book I think you'll really enjoy it. Good night and um, thank you for watching.